Hello everyone and welcome to my second vlog which is on skills and capacities in speed and agility. For the speed component I will look at acceleration and for the agility component I will look at cutting. Firstly, a few skills and capacities that athletics coaches and researchers have highlighted to be important during acceleration. Namely, having forceful triple extension, the ability to apply force into the ground in a horizontal direction, in other words, pushing backwards into the track, and also having a high ratio of horizontal to vertical force application. So can the athlete continue to apply force horizontally into the track for as long as possible or for the greatest distance possible? My first athlete is Tom, who is also a fitness coach at Liverpool. He isn't a sprinter, but is a good all-round athlete, which recent performance testing supports. He has a counter movement jump of 50 centimetres and a single leg counter movement jump of 22 centimetres. His single leg horizontal jump scores are over the 200 centimetre mark and he has a drop jump RSI of 3.6. Lastly, he is capable of producing 2,500 newtons of force during a bilateral isometric hip extension test with his hips fixed at 60 degrees. With performance scores like these, he certainly has a good capacity to accelerate even better by using these strengths more skillfully. And taking nothing away from Tom, this is actually a pretty impressive acceleration for someone with no sprinting background. But the main thing I've picked out is that he's already stood upright between 10 and 12 metres. This suggests that his ability to continually apply force in a horizontal direction is lacking and that the ratio of vertical to horizontal force application transitions to vertical too quickly. During these freeze frames, I highlight in blue the line of the tibia of the striking leg to give an indication of the direction of force application. At the start, at step two, you can see that there is a good degree of horizontal force application. Step four, you could say it's 50-50, but here by step six, you can definitely see that his vertical forces are greater than horizontal, judged by the line of the tibia. So by step 8 and step 10, the majority of Tom's forces are being applied vertically, meaning that his body is now upright and he's lost the body position to be able to apply forces in a horizontal manner. One quick way to try and identify one reason for this is to look at Tom's A skip, which is the technical component of acceleration. What I'm looking at here is where, in relation to Tom's centre of mass, the strike foot hits the ground. In this frame, we can see Tom's strike foot ahead of his centre of mass. Presuming Tom utilises this same movement strategy during his acceleration, the striking foot landing ahead of the centre of mass will incur braking forces slowing down his momentum. Also, with the strike foot landing ahead of the body, this will apply vertical forces into the track as opposed to horizontal forces. These vertical forces will then push Tom's body upwards into that upright body position which we saw quite early into his acceleration. Ideally, the strike foot will travel down and backwards, landing almost in line with the standing foot. This way, during an acceleration, the strike foot will be travelling backwards in relation to the centre of mass and pushing forces more horizontally to propel his body forwards. A couple of exercises which can help refine this technical skill are resisted A-skips, whereby the resistance forces the athlete's striking foot to strike down and back towards the standing foot to maintain tension in the band and or forward momentum if travelling forwards. Or resisted sprints with heavy resistance, which research suggests improves the technical ability for athletes to apply force horizontally into the ground. My second athlete is Andy, who is a 400 meter runner, so he has a bit more track experience than Tom. Similar to Tom, Andy has an RSI of 3.6 and his single leg counter movement jump is between 20 and 22 centimetres. He actually has the ability to produce 2,000 newtons on his single leg counter movement jump, which is around 500 newtons more than Tom. However, his bilateral counter movement jump is 37 centimetres. His horizontal counter movement jump single leg is 175 centimetres. And his isometric hip extension peak score is 1600 newtons. Andy's performance profile suggests that he is capable of producing high forces particularly seen vertically in his counter movement jumps, but struggles to orientate them horizontally. It could be thought that his capacity to generate high forces at the hip are what's lacking, judging from his hip extension scores and his single leg horizontal counter movement jumps. 
also because of his high force vertical profile. I think he is lacking capacity in the velocity of contraction area of the curve. Focusing purely on contraction velocity, these band assisted jumps are one method of stimulating a velocity change. Slightly more specific to acceleration, ballistic exercises which require rapid triple extension in a horizontal direction can be used to target the hip extensors in their orientation of competitive movement and can also be used as a method for the athlete to get a feel for an explosive first step during acceleration. As Andy is a forceful athlete, all coaching cues during these exercises will be based on being as fast as possible. And now for the agility part of the vlog where I'm going to be looking at cutting, where coaches and researchers firstly look at the fundamental movement skills and coordination, uh, good footwork patterns to, to be able to decelerate the body with good flexion at the ankle, knee and hip to drop the centre of mass, um, being able to combine movement, so doing this whilst pivoting the hips, whilst pushing the foot away from the body to change direction, and also doing this with quality in response to a stimulus and with good reaction times as well. Up first we have Stephen, who is a high jumper, performing a simple cutting drill, and he'll be followed by Andy. On the first three clips here, Stephen is reacting to my shout of the colour of the cone of which to cut to. And in the last two clips here, he is performing a simple change of direction without reacting to my stimulus. With Stephen being a high jumper, these movements will be something that he isn't used to. And so his level of skill at performing these tasks isn't the highest. It is decelerating and turning the hips, which Stephen struggles with, which I put down to general coordination and multiplanar footwork and movement because the same issues are evident in the simple change of direction drill without stimulus and in these low level footwork drills. To try and improve his deceleration technique, I took Stephen through a basic exos style movement drill, which focused on dropping into the athletic position and getting his center of mass into a more favorable position to change direction from. We then progressed to jogging into the athletic position Back to the simple change of direction drill without stimulus. And finally, he responded to my shout of left or right. During this session, I also focused on coaching his footwork by cueing him to push the foot away from the body to change direction and use the constraint of having to stick to an imaginary line between the two cones and 90 degrees away from the cone on both sides. This, I feel, helps Stephen to change direction a little bit sharper and made him focus on the accuracy of his change of direction. And back to Andy, who remember I believed was lacking hip extension force capacities, particularly because of his single leg horizontal counter movement jump and isometric tests. I still believe this to be the case, judging from his movement during these cutting actions, as there seems to be a reliance on quad strength and very good dorsiflexion range to help him to lower his centre of mass. And there is minimal flexion at the hip thus small reliance on his hip extensors to absorb and produce force. Given the chance to work with Andy daily, I would look to improve his hip extension capacities via a combination of warm-up based movement preparation and gym based strength training. I would use the warm-up to introduce low level daily load to the hip extensors and also to integrate some movement education through exercises such as feet elevated glute bridge raises, rear foot elevated split squat and hop and hold. And finally, gym based strength training would target force production and absorption at different loads and velocities through exercises such as the Romanian deadlift, cable pull throughs and kettlebell swings. This way, Andy would not only be increasing the general strength capacity of the hip extensors, but through the movement preparation sessions, he would also be learning how to use these new capacities in more functional movements through progressive exercises. And that's it for vlog two. So thank you for watching and listening and see you at the summer on site. Cheers.